Hi, I'm Frank Garcia. I'm here at scrapbook.com and we just finished up our last step, which was letting all of this goodness dry. So we went ahead and put our shells on. We went ahead and put some of our pebbles and some of our stars down. We went ahead and put a little bit of gloss gel. We went ahead and stuck all of our little art stones down. So we let this dry for a little bit so that we can go to this next step. So now we're gonna prepare all these beautiful pieces to kind of add some paint and stuff like that later. So for that, we're gonna need some heavy gesso. So heavy gesso, if you've never used heavy gesso, heavy gesso is a really great medium for this. So what does this do? So this is sort of like a preparer for any sort of mixed media. So you just wanna use this as a base, okay? And this gesso here that I'm using is heavy gesso, meaning that it's very thick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start by covering everything that we just did with this so that when we get to the paint, it really adds a nice touch to that. It'll, it'll prepare the surface for everything that's to come. So sometimes, you know, you have certain um, embellishments that don't really work well um, with paint or that when you add some sort of medium, it just slides off. Well, gesso prepares everything for that purpose. So for example, these pebbles here, if you didn't put gesso on them, everything that you would add to them will just fall off because there's nothing to grab onto. So it's almost like a, like a surface prep. You know, when you paint, it's like a primer. Or if you, you know, if you wear makeup, it's sort of like a primer for your face before foundation, right? So you're gonna go ahead and add this onto everything. Now gesso can be used in a variety of ways. So you can definitely use it for this purpose, which is what a lot of people use it for, um, for preparing surfaces. You can use it on canvases. Uh, a lot of people like using it on a canvas so that the surface is nice and prepped. A lot of canvases come prepped already, but a lot of people like using the gesso just to give it an, an extra boost of nice tooth. So this is what gesso is gonna do. It's going to prepare the surface for paint or anything else you want to apply it to. So for example, if you pick some shells that were maybe a different color or didn't quite match, that's okay because when you apply the gesso, they're all gonna be the same color. So it won't really matter if your shells are brown or pink or any other color that you selected, it's okay. Now make sure that when you're applying your gesso, you also apply it to your pebbles because that's really important for the painting step, okay? And you'll notice I'm not applying a really thick layer. Gesso tends to dry really quickly so you don't have to worry about it uh, drying for hours unless you're putting it through a stencil. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention. When you use gesso, you can actually use it with a stencil to create a base like this, like we did earlier. Or if you wanna use it uh, as, a, as a coloring medium, you can actually use a little bit of artisan powder or some mica powders and you can create your own colorized gesso, which is really cool. Cause then if you have a particular project that needs to be color coded or color matched, then you're good. Now, if you notice, I'm not really going too crazy perfect. I just want it to be kind of rough because again, this is a mixed media project. So it doesn't have to be necessarily that perfect, okay? And make sure you get the underside of the shells to make sure that you don't have any pieces that are exposed. So now once I'm done, Putting the gesso on here, I'm gonna give it a quick dry just to make sure that everything in, it's nice and dry for the next step. So I'm gonna give it a quick dry. Now once our piece is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and try to add a little bit more texture by adding a little bit more of my crackle paste. Now, instead of using it with a palette knife or using it, um, you know, scooping it with something else, I'm gonna use a brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of this and I'm actually just gonna brush it onto my shells just to add a little bit more interest and dimension to my pieces. So I'm gonna add a little bit to the pebbles. I'm gonna add a little bit to the stars. And anywhere where I see like a flat surface, it's nice to add because then that's gonna crack later and it's gonna add a really nice touch to our next step that we're gonna do later. So I'm just gonna brush this on like I would paint. And the thing about this medium is that it's nice and creamy. So when you see it like this, you can just add it on like a paint. So you don't have to worry about it uh, glopping up or anything like that in any of the areas. So I'm just gonna add a little more down here, maybe a little bit more on my pebbles. Okay. And you can again, let, let this dry on its own 
or you can add a little bit of heat if you want to with your heat tool. If you want a little bit more cracks, then you might want to let it dry on its own so that you get bigger cracks and a little bit more dimension on there. Now the next step is going to be using our impasto paint. Now impasto paint is a heavy body paint, so that means that it, it'll keep its shape, it'll keep its form as you're painting. You can definitely draw on it, do anything you want on it, but I'd like to use it as a texturizing agent. So I'm gonna just put some on my mat right here, and I'm gonna take a palette knife. Now a little palette knife like this works well, and I'm gonna create sort of like um, waves with it per se. So I'm just gonna take it and just kind of do a flicking little motion like this. And you can do this on any area where you kind of want a little bit of an accent. Now I know this has a color. I'm using the color mint. Just kind of goes really well with the collection. And you can add it anywhere you need a little bit more attention, a little bit more accent. And you can see how heavy it is. So I like that. So I'm just going to add a little bit on this end right here. If you wanted to, you can definitely add a little bit on the shells if you want, but I'm just gonna add a little bit right here. And then you can definitely add a little bit in here in between this little area here. And if it goes on the wood, that's okay. Now this paint needs to dry, of course, and it'll dry pretty quickly if you don't put it on too, too thick. Um, once it dries, we'll come back and start working with our sparks paints, which are really fun paints that will add a lot of sparkle and shine to this project. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.